I'm uh, Joe Randolph, President and CEO of the Innovation Institute. My background has been in uh, hospital and health system operations. Most of my career was as a uh, CFO. And the last five years prior to launching the Innovation Institute, I was the COO of a large health system. And what I uh, found was that it felt like, you'll remember there was a movie back in the 90s called uh, Groundhog Day with Bill Murray. And it started to feel like Groundhog Day to me. A lot of the same problems kept resurfacing. And we were using the you know, same kinds of uh, solutions to, to resolve them. And it, it almost felt like Groundhog Day. So out of that, I, I saw that there was a real need with uh, healthcare, with everybody talking about how are we going to take cost out of the, uh, the system and improve care with less resources. How are we going to do that? So I thought innovation has to be part of the, uh, the solution. And so we did a lot of research in terms of what others were doing or what inst innovation institutes were out there and how they were working. And what we found was there were some great uh, institutes out there. We met with Mayo and Geisinger and Cleveland Clinic and went up to the Garfield Center in Northern California with Kaiser. And all of these were really good systems, but what we found was they were really focused internally on their own organizations. And we wanted to set something up that would be a collaborative to bring people together to solve some of the complex problems today in our, our healthcare system. And so it wasn't just about you know, solving some of the problems, but it was also about taking cost out and tapping into the people on the front lines that have ideas about how to make things better. So with that, let me kind of launch into a little bit about the Innovation Institute model. So we had two overarching goals when we formed the Innovation Institute. Uh, one was to obviously focus on innovation, and the other was you know, to uh, tap into those people in, in the front lines and look for new revenue sources for these organizations and ways to take cost out. And our, our mission statement is to cultivate innovation by, and advancing it by in collaboration with others, by doing more with less for more people. And where that comes from is, is Gandhian innovation. And in light of what we were facing in healthcare today, we thought that was real appropriate because there's a great need, there's less resources, and the only way to really move that forward and be able to advance it is to tap into the workforce and find some of those solutions. So this is the business model. Um, there were several principles or thoughts that went into it when we formed it. Um, hospitals when you think about innovation, they tend to be very risk-averse organizations. They focus on things like Lean and Six Sigma and evidence-based medicine. And as you heard from Joe Chiani this morning, that's real important when you're thinking about patient safety and patient care. But when you think about innovation, you really need to create an environment where you can actually reward failure and, and allow people to, uh, to fail so that you can ultimately pivot and find the, the breakthrough. And so what I found in my career in, in nonprofit health systems is there's really no tech transfer office or there's not a, a big uh, commitment to advancing innovation. So a lot of the entrepreneurs and, and the providers, the physicians and the clinicians and so forth, they have to go out on their own and find you know, how they can take things or find those solutions and take them to the market. And when I was CFO, I'd oftentimes have a surgeon come to me and say, I've got this great idea on this instrument, how I can make it a lot better. And I had really nowhere that I could direct them to, to help them within the health system. And they would ultimately talk to the manufacturer, and then six months later, I'd be paying more for an instrument that my own physician had invented. So it was very frustrating. So what we did was we went out to set up a model that would bring people together. And so at the top here across this, you'll see that there's five systems. We're authorized to have seven nonprofit systems as what we call member owners or investors. They invest $10 million to be a member owner. And, and for that, uh, we provide the infrastructure, all the tech transfer uh, capabilities in order to uh, uh, advance innovation. And the model that we put forth is also we wanted it to be profitable from the very beginning. A lot of the uh, incubators that are out there, you know, they, they operate a lot like a VC where they get their initial investment, they make their bets on the things that they think they can take to market, and then they wait for those things to go to market and see if they're going to get a return. We wanted to be able to set up a model that when health systems invest, immediately they're going to get a return on their investment, you know, cash flow and profitability. And then they would also have the ability to have the infrastructure to advance innovation at no cost to them. So these health systems, they invest their money. We provide the infrastructure. 
we have PhDs, MDs, uh, MBAs. We have a, a whole uh, tech transfer team that does the evaluation, the assessment of these concepts and ideas. We determine which ones we think have merit, and then we will advance them all the way to commercialization and take them to market. And the runway on, on, you know, from some concept to when something goes to market, as many of you know, it can be five to seven years. And so that's why it was real important that we put this model together, which is somewhat unique compared to other incubators out there, that allowed us to be profitable from the very get-go. There's other ways that we, we tap into the workforce other than just taking traditional, a traditional model where they submit disclosures and, and give us their ideas. We also have what we call facilitated innovation where we can bring subject matter experts together as well as, uh, you know, the inventors or the people that have the ideas and then spend two or three days working towards a solution with bringing, you know, people together from across the country to work on some of these things. Um, we also have software where we can do challenges, where we can go out to the marketplace or within one of these health systems and put challenges forth and then put prizes up for finding solutions to problems. So on the, the, on the far side, you'll see it says Innovation Lab. It's not a lab with microscopes and so forth. What it is is it's, that's the incubator where we, when these health systems come in, we put staff, embed them into these health systems to help mine the ideas and, and get it from the clinicians on the front lines. And so we take all the risk. If there's something they bring forth, we think it has merit. There's no additional investment required by the inventor or the health system. Um, we advance it all the way to commercialization. If it, if it makes it, uh, we get a share of it. Uh, the inventor gets a share and the health system gets a share. And this typical split is 40% for the inventor, which is higher than what they would get at an academic center. 40% uh, for us, because we're bearing the cost of taking it to market. And then 20% for the health system. We don't take the intellectual property that resides with the health system where the clinician comes from or the, or the employee or the, the clinician, uh, physician. Um, and so that's the innovation lab. We also have relationships with industry. So we have industry partners that help underwrite the cost of the lab. So Boston Scientific and Dell and Deloitte, and we're talking with several others. And the reason they're interested is they want to co-develop product with us. So they may have something they want to bring to us, or we may have something in their space that they want to uh, take on and work with us on. Now, the piece that makes our model somewhat unique and allows us to be profitable early on is this middle piece. We call it the Enterprise Development Group. In essence, it's a portfolio of service companies. And so we have today 12 companies. They're generating about the year that just ended 165 million in revenues and about 12.5 million in EBITDA. And these companies, all of them are profitable. There's different ways we acquire them. Uh, we can either go out in the open marketplace and buy a company. Um, we can have it contributed from one of the member systems or it can be, um, you know, uh, a con contribution from the uh, owner and they retain a small piece of equity. Um, the last piece of the model is a growth fund, and that's where we invest in others outside of our organization, and it allows us, gives us the ability to uh, invest in things either from a concept or something that's already got patents and a product on, in place. So this is the, the enterprise development group. As I said, it's more of a shared services model. We don't get into any direct patient care areas. A lot of these things are overhead departments that hospitals and health systems outsource. And so uh, by doing that, we're, allowed, we're able to uh, provide savings back to the health systems and generate cash flow for us. Uh, one example here is we have a biomedical engineering company, services all the equipment in the hospitals. And two examples at St. Joe's, we saved them $54 million over seven years is the projection. We're on track for that. And $6.5 million is that chalk. And that's just one example. So, because of our backgrounds and operations, we know which things we can tap into to get savings for these hospitals and health systems. This is just kind of an overview of that, uh, some of the uh, partners that we have at the bottom. You can see we're teamed up with Cleveland Clinic as well, and SOAP, which is Society of Physician Entrepreneurs. Um, we've had over 850 disclosures at this point, 200 active, about 10 are in negotiation, and four have already reached transactions. And so you can see that um, you know, we're still ramping up, bringing in some other systems. And it's not just that we're going to work with these seven systems once we get to seven. We also are going to have a subscription model where we can work with others all across the country. And then finally, here's just some examples of things that have come through. You can see at the top right there, it's a, called Wingsling. It's going to be in CVS starting in the first of the year. Um, we also have a conforming, uh, conformal thermal pack 
which came through our portal. We also have, you can tap into the portal and, and submit ideas. Anybody can submit an idea. But these are just some examples of things that have come through and you can kind of see um, about 35% are uh, medical devices, about 35 are HIT, and the balance is a spread of other things.